So John, before we talk about um, this weekend's clash with Falkirk, uh, final reflections on the, the result up at 4 far. Yeah, it was a big win, obviously. Uh, we have home, coming back for a goal down. Uh, winning late, all these things uh, contributed to a good afternoon, you know. Everyone knows the record that Forfar has not been good over the years. Uh, I was a bit surprised actually, it was so long since the Rovers won up there. And to win four games in a row as well, I didn't realise how yeah, far you've got to go back to find that as well. So, uh, very positive result, does well for everyone's confidence and the character of the team to keep going. Uh, so, yeah, it was, it's, a, it's a great three points. Uh, you know, still top of the table looking forward to a very very big game at the weekend so all good really yeah. we're going to talk about the the major incident yeah. um, of that game uh, later on but for you was it a great was it a great show of character that they dug in in adverse circumstances and turned a, win, a losing position into a win yeah very much so yeah that's exactly what I'm saying there yeah and Bad time to lose the goal, right on half time. You know, we just took the, the, the centre and uh, the referee blew for half time. So there was no worse time to actually lose the goal because you're coming in right on half time having had that disappointment. In a half that we kind of controlled without creating a hell of a lot, you know, but we knew in the second half, sort of shooting down uh, the hill and with the kind of wind that was there behind our backs, we thought we'd dominate the second half. and. That's how it kind of turned out, and uh, yeah, the character that we're showing to keep going, keep going, keep going, right to the very end, uh, and there's no better time to, to win a match than you know at that at that time, so late, so late in the game, no time for the opposition to you know to recover and, and get a goal back, and um, that, you know, I felt that we thoroughly deserved the victory here, yeah. yeah. and, and it sets us up for the next challenge, which is the not insignificant task of. Second uh, of Falkirk, sorry, um, first against second here at Starks Park. It goes without saying that in front of a decent crowd and a quality team, you'll be looking forward to the game, but you know it'll be tough. Yeah, we're, we're three points clear of Falkirk, two points clear of East Fife in, uh, in second position. So, yeah, we are uh, looking forward to the game. Yeah, we're at home. Uh, you know, our home record's very, very good. We understand Falkirk could be a tough nut to crack. However, you know, we won beat them here you know a month ago so we know we can do that uh, and it would set us up perfectly at the end of the first quarter to be sitting at the top of the table it would be nice to have that gap widened to six points you know but we know to do that it will take a hell of a lot of work uh, we'll need to be very well organised uh, we'll need to you know retain possession of the ball we'll need to be composed on the ball uh, and obviously we'll need to try and exploit any weaknesses that come about in the, the Falkirk team to get the win. It's going to take another, yet another um, excellent display by everyone, not least our two central midfielders, Reagan Hendry, Brad Spencer, they've been, they've been very good for us so far, haven't they? Yeah, no, no, without doubt, yeah, I mean, uh, it's a bit unfortunate that, you know, Ross Matthews picked up an injury as well, the three of them were, you know, making a real good uh, trio in there, uh, and obviously, Louis coming back into the frame, uh, added that attacking, threat as well so the two consistents have been Brad and, and Reagan uh, and they have struck up a really, really good partnership Brad's got to sell a really good few assists so that's pleasing as well uh, Reagan's controlling the game for us uh, making passes uh, he's always makes himself available he's never ever hiding for the ball always looking for the ball and generally he uses it very well so yeah they've, they've struck up a really really good partnership uh, and long may that continue a good test for them both at the, at the weekend against Falkirk yeah. and in that in, the, in that match against Falkirk the, the composition of the squad is going to look slightly different um, a couple of little things going on um, we know about uh, Nando has gone out to Kelty on loan uh, what was the what was the thinking uh, behind him going out to Kelty Hearts get yeah, game time you know uh, Stephen Anderson came in coming in has actually made it more difficult for anyone else to get in you know we're, we're played with uh, Ian Davidson and Stephen and Kyle there so very difficult to break in there and Fernandes at a stage where he needs to be playing games regularly to get better you know he's no long came into the country and although he will benefit here and get better through the training we don't have a reserve team we don't have anywhere for him to play other than in the first team and he's not been playing in the first team so he's not going to get any better the only way he can get better is to go and get games uh, we were looking to put him out Kelly were looking to get a centre back in 
it's a decent level, it's a good good enough level for him to go and do well. There's an expectation level to do well at Kelly, so that expectation level will put him under pressure to do well. Uh, we have to deal with expectation level, so he'll go there to play under the pressure of expecting to win every game. Uh, so there's a test, very much a test there. He's going to play a competitive football. They're a team that everyone is looking to try and take their scalp. Uh, so again, that is very much similar to the situations that we find ourselves in, and and it won't be easy by any mark of means. But we need them to play games, and we we can we can do that. So there's a little bit of short termism from going out and doing that to benefit us in the long term. It's to benefit us basically. You know, the, the reason we've done it because, as I say, he's not going to learn sitting watching games on the bench. You know, he needs to be out there making decisions when to head it, when to tackle. You know, when to get close, when to drop off, when to pass it short, when to pass it long. Decision making, you know, decision making, and now you only get that by playing in games, you know. So uh, these are all the things. The all the things are for us to get better. Actually, you know, uh, they are doing us a favour. We are doing them a favour. Uh, it's a win-win. Great, yeah. Hopefully, should help everyone. And um, another um, another change to your team sheet, your squad lineup uh, on Saturday. Um, news that we announced uh, just at tea time today. Um, a familiar face is returning to the Rovers, Daniel Armstrong. Um, how pleased are you to tie him up until the end of the season? Yeah, really, really pleased. Yeah, delighted to, to get him. Yeah, it's uh, a little bit of a boost, you know, on the back of Louis' injury. It's a boost. He's not there to replace Louis, but it's certainly a boost for him to come in. And, and uh, if we can get Dan up to speed and up to uh, where he was when he left here, then, you know, we've cracked it because he, uh, he was an excellent player for us. Uh, just roughly around about this, maybe slightly early than this time last year, but just about this time last year, he started to get involved here, playing in a couple of sorry, uh, reserve games and, and, and bounce games, that type of thing. And, uh, you know, after two or three games, sort of hit the ground running, and he was excellent for us, scoring goals, creating goals, and basically exciting the fans. And it means that we've got other options now, you know, with, with Dan coming in. We've got more options, we've got some really, really, really good options, so I'm delighted with that. Uh, the more tools we have to do the job, all the better, especially ones like Dan who can go and take players on. He's very, very tricky, but he's got a goal in him. He reads the game well, he knows the positions to get in to get goals, he can score free kicks, like the one up at Arbroath, you know, on the 22nd of December last year. Uh, so it's, for me, it's a great, great signing and, and a massive boost to everyone connected, you know, on, on the back here. Louis where everyone's really down about about Lewis. So we're hoping that this will give everyone a little bit of a, a little bit of a boost as well. Yeah. Mention of that man, uh, Louis Vaughan, you know, we can't we can't not cover it. Um just um we made the announcement about his assessment and his scan. Um just, just give us a, a a few details about his assessment. Yeah, I mean <clears throat> I think when it happened on Saturday, I think 99.9% of us knew on Saturday what the situation was. You know, it was similar to the one at Bacon. There wasn't, it wasn't, I mean, it was within range of players, but there wasn't actually anyone actually tackling or whatever. And, you know, the way he went over, yeah, and the way he reacted, you know, we feared the worst, and he did also. And unfortunately, that's exactly what's happened. The worst has been, uh, come to fruition through the, the scan and it's a, a ruptured Achilles tendon. So the ACL, ACL. ACL, yeah. The the general assumption on this is six and eight months. What we've got to realise though, Louis done this before. You know, so it may take longer. Uh, if it was the first one, you know, you may be looking at six and eight months. Yeah, this is a second time. Uh, just to clarify, it's not the one that he just did. It's not the one he did at Brecon in January. It's the one he done previously, way back. Uh, yeah, it's the one he did then. So the one he did recently is okay. There has not been no problems with that. Uh, it's a one from way back. So just to clarify that. So it's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking for for Lewis. That's all we can be concerned with. You know. Uh, he, you know, he's such a nice boy for to get away from the fact that he's an excellent football player and you know I was delighted to have him back in the training he lifted the training up to another level when he came in he lifted the team the players get a massive lift from him when he just becomes available and so it's a massive blow 
you know, and that's why I'm saying it's a little bit of a lift getting Dan in, but he's, he's not there directly to replace uh, Louis. But uh, yeah, but heartbroken for for Louis Vaughan. There's absolutely no doubt about that. But he seems to be in good spirits. You know, he seems to be in good spirits, and he seems to be talking about you know he's going to get through it. He's going to work hard. He'll get the operation later in the month. He's got to get full range of movement in the knee before they will do an operation, and that will take you know uh, the a lot of swelling uh, on, the, on the on the knee right now. It'll take a bit of time, so it'll be towards the end of October we would be anticipating an operation. And as I say, because it's he's done it before, I would have expected it to take a little bit longer than normal. So I think even Lewis is of the opinion that even if it meant coming back for the last game of the season, he wouldn't be going to go and risk it. You know, uh, I think he's definitely looking over the close season into the start of next season, you know. So I think that's where we're, we've got to give him the time. We've got to realise the extent of this injury. And it's not just the first one, it's the second one on the same knee. And that will certainly, uh, you know, extend it a little bit longer. Uh, so if he gets over the summer and he's back for the start of the season, I think we would be all, all delighted with that. That's things stand right now. And I would ask every Wraith Rovers fan, and generally football people, uh, football fans, if you... If you see Louis kicking about anywhere, you know, try and pick him up, try and be positive with him, uh, try and help him through this this time because it's it's very difficult when, you know, you're a young boy, you leave school, you become a football player, and you it's what you've really dreamt to do, and uh, you, you've had a great start to your career, and you're developing as a player, and then you're hit with these injuries and you can't get to do your job, you know, and I know every single one of us would love to be football players. Well, most of us would like to be football players. Uh, I mean, a wee boy growing up, that's kind of all that we used to do many years ago anyway. Uh, so, uh, Louis is in that situation, and unfortunately, he's not getting to do his job, and uh, we've got to make sure that we keep his spirits up all over the place. Yeah. And, and, and what news of the, the rest of the squad, the other injured players, Tony Dingwall and so on? Tony Dingwall got an injection into his ankle on Tuesday, and that's hoping to get rid of this little bit of uh, issue that he had there, you know, we're hoping that's going to clear that up. So he is expected to run, return it into proper training on Monday, and and hopefully it's a matter of just kicking on from there. So you know, we'll keep our fingers crossed that this uh, injection has done the trick, mm. and he comes back into training on Monday with a view to getting into full training uh, gradually, and hopefully not so far away. Yeah, I mean Ross Matthews. With his operation on his cheekbone and, and uh, you know he's still three weeks past Tuesday there post post operation, uh, a six week minimum post operation. So you know we're just under three weeks to the, to the six weeks. So you know no great. Uh, he's no nearly coming back. Uh, Joe Victoria hurt his knee against Airdrie in the short time he was on, unfortunately. Uh, so he's back to square one. A few weeks there. Ross Munro, Ross Munro, I would expect him to be available at the weekend, but, uh, you know, we would expect him maybe to be the bench. You know, that would have to, to come to the bench. Uh, well, Robbie Thomas. Yeah, Robbie's been working extremely hard and he's been, again, doing it to uh, St George's Park, working there. Uh, so he's getting the absolute best of treatment, absolutely fantastic facilities and uh, staff that they have down there, and he's getting the best of treatment. And Robbie's such a professional that he's that he's desperate to get back. Uh, so we'll see next week how how Robbie is. Uh, you know he's getting nearer to the time that we expect him. You know, roughly October, November. And that's you know we're still in that kind of area, so you know I'm hoping maybe in a week or two maybe we'll be back into training. So we'll wait and see. Finally, um, Falkirk at the weekend, top against second. Falkirk going to bring a significant number through. Uh, Falkirk, I understand there's going to yeah. be a hell of a lot of support. How can the atmosphere drive the game and spur the players on? Yeah, it'll be the same for both sets of fans, you know, uh, and players, sorry, you know, uh, 
we would anticipate a 3,000 crowd, you know, I think we should have 1,500 and 1,500's roughly what Falco could be taking to games away from home. So yeah, we're anticipating a 3,000 crowd which will create a good atmosphere. Players always thrive on a good atmosphere, you know, there's nothing worse than playing and, uh, you know, two or three hundred people, you know, so in front of 3,000, hopefully more than that, yeah, that will add add to the, the occasion, you know, it should be a cracking game. Uh, you know, they've come down from the, the championship and they're hot favourites to go straight back up. However, you know, as I said earlier, we've beaten them earlier in the season there and uh, it would be a massive result for us to go and make that six-point gap.